Hey, what's going on everybody? Kevin the Tech Ninja here. And today we're talking about the Galaxy S22. This is Samsung's entry level phone in their Galaxy S lineup. It retails for $800 for 128 gigabytes. If you are new to my channel, these type of videos, I don't go heavy into specs. I've talked about specs in previous videos, so make sure you hit the playlist down below if you wanna know all about the specs and things like that. Today I'm gonna to talk about my true experience using this phone over a long period of time. Now Samsung sent me this phone, I would say two weeks before release, and off and on, I've been using it since then. So I've had it for quite a while now. Speaking of updates, there is an update available for this phone that I did not get a chance to roll out just yet. So be mindful of that. This phone is updated as of March 15th. So that's kind of where we are in the update cycle. So let's talk about in the hand. So in the hand, I love this form factor. I know it's subjective, but I do find a 6.1 inch display to be perfect. I feel the balance, the reachability is all perfect for me. Even though the phone looks nice, it also feels great. And I will say it's pretty durable too. Samsung is using something called Gorilla Glass Victus, which you combine that with the armor aluminum around the phone and this makes this phone pretty durable, even though it's very pretty looking. Now, I'm not the type of guy to do a drop test on a phone, because these phones are very expensive, but I can tell you that looking at drop tests and actually dropping it on accident, it does hold up pretty well. You may see some scratches here and there towards the edges if you do drop it. Now, even though the glass is stronger than previous generations, I wouldn't say it is less likely to get scratches just because I have a couple of hairline scratches on the display. It's really hard to see. You may not see it on camera. You may see it. It really depends on how the light hits it. But at the same time, this phone can still get scratches. So screen protectors are recommended. I'm going to leave a link down below for all the recommended accessories I have for this phone and things you should check out if you are picking up this phone. So since we're talking about the screen and scratches, I guess we should talk about the display a little bit. This right here is going to be a full HD display. It's not quad HD. And and some people are just like up in arms that a phone this expensive doesn't have quad HD. But being honest, day-to-day -day usage, this is a great screen. Number one, it gets very bright, even in direct sunlight. I had this phone in Austin, Texas, and it was uh, like 85 degrees, very sunny, and I had no problem seeing what I wanted to see on the screen. You can crank the brightness all the way up from this menu, and there's even a setting to go into extra brightness. So you can actually add more brightness to the screen or in the reverse, you could do something called extra dim. So you can make the screen really, really dim if you're using it in like a lower light situation. So you do have a lot of options for display. Now I will say also with the display, which is definitely nice, is that the colors, if you can see right here, this is a very vibrant screen and everything just looks really good with it. When we go into display, we can see motion smoothness and it's set to adaptive, so it's 120 hertz. That essentially means you're gonna have a smoother display. You can go to standard, which gives you better battery life, but you are sacrificing a lot of that smoothness that we want to see from our phones. Also on display, there's tons of other options and you know that's one thing about Samsung, you do have a lot of options too. Most of the time, I switch mine over to natural instead of vivid. I do like the natural color profile, but vivid looks nicer on camera so when I'm shooting video I keep it on vivid and then from here you can also adjust the white balance you can move it to something more cool or something more warm depending on what you like I like it in the middle I do feel that it's very balanced and it looks really good to me under advanced settings you can adjust the RGB levels by yourself so you have a lot of settings in here that you don't typically see from other phones and that's why I think this is like one of the better not just display text but display software you can really customize it to get the picture you want and Samsung does this with most of their phones, and I really like it. I think more manufacturers should do it, but Samsung does it, and I think they do it very well. Also, what I like about this screen, it is like immersive, the whole screen right here. You have just a little hole punch. You don't have a notch like you see on the iPhone. Now, when I talk to people who's not in the tech community, they don't know what I mean by the notch. So let me show you a quick example. Here's the notch, and here's the hole punch. You can see the difference at the top of the screen here. You can see the notch is just taking up a good amount of the screen right here at the top. But if you take a look here, it's just a tiny little dot. That's what Samsung brings to the table. This little tiny little dot, that's the camera. And I think it just makes everything look a whole lot better. As we know, the S22 Ultra has the S Pen built into the phone. However, the S22 and S22 Plus does not. If you still want that experience, but you don't need a full tablet like the S Tab, then check out today's sponsor, Remarkable. This is the Remarkable 2, the next generation paper tablet. This is a legit tablet tool used to get work done. It comes with a stylus and it makes it feel like you're writing on actual paper. It even has a very satisfying writing sound. Also, the world's thinnest tablet around too. With it, you can easily take notes. You can sign PDFs, 
read an ebook, convert handwritten notes into text, access to Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, and it also has two weeks of battery life. What I find pretty neat is that you can organize things with pages and folders so you can keep notes for a project you're working on in one folder and contracts in another. It also doesn't have any backlight, glare, eye strain, so when you need to rest your eyes from blue light or you're just looking at screens all day, this tablet is perfect for this. The pen is attached to the side with magnets and the folio case protects the back and the screen. Lately, I've been using it to sign documents and brush up on some old reading that I've been consciously trying to do before bed. Overall, this is a tremendous addition to anyone's toolkit. Thanks again for sponsoring this portion of the video. And let's get back to that Galaxy. I do like the speakers on this phone. Even though this phone is pretty small, I do like the speaker setup. I think the speaker is really robust. Even at higher volume levels, it doesn't distort, doesn't crackle. It always sounds good. Here's an audio example with the audio turned all the way up. So I do like Samsung's software package. You know, many years ago, people would talk about the bloat from Samsung and all those things. I like One UI. I think One UI is great. Number one, it is customizable, so you can download different themes in their theme store. And of course, it's Android. You can download custom icons, custom widgets, and all those things that you want to do to customize this phone. And yeah, I like Samsung software. So one example is duplicate applications. You have this Samsung folder that has a lot of applications in here, which are really nice apps. They look pretty good, but sometimes you run into redundant applications. So for example, messages, which is Google messages, and then you have Samsung messages. And it's very confusing when you go in and the icons look very similar too. Then of course you have like the internet from Samsung and then you have the standard internet from Google. So you have a lot of those situations where it's sort of hard to know which app to go into and you kind of have to pick one and it comes preloaded on the phone. So I know Samsung wants you using their apps and you know, for the most part, their apps are really good. I like using them, but it gets very confusing for a lot of people who don't know which app to go into or which app to use. And another thing that One UI sort of struggles with is that there's a lot of options. Now, I'm a guy that loves a lot of options. I don't mind having a ton of options, but one of my family members, they have a Samsung phone. And there are so many options in this phone that sometimes it gets a little hard for people to figure out what they're looking for, what they wanna do. Now you can do a search button here at the very top. So you can do something like display and then you have all your display settings right here which which definitely is nice um definitely nice to to utilize but a lot of people want to look for settings it just makes it very hard so i was hoping that there would be like a regular mode and then an advanced mode that has more settings but at the same time it is what it is just a lot of settings here and it gets kind of confusing beyond that one ui is buttery smooth you know anything you want to do in one ui you can definitely do and it runs really well you have a ton of different options like window and windowed mode. So you can open up an app and then open up a second app at the same time. And this is definitely cool. So you can like have a web browser open and then have a YouTube video going or anything like that. So you can run two apps at one time, which makes it nice. You can even pop windows out and have floating windows. You know, a lot of those things that we've seen from Samsung in the past, all those tricks from the bigger phones are on this phone too. So you have a lot of those options as well. So anyways, big kudos to Samsung with One UI, all the changes they made over the years. I think they're paying off and One UI to me is my favorite skin for Android. This video is not about specs, but just know this phone does have the latest flagship processor inside. So any activity that you may want to do on this phone, you can definitely do it. Editing video, playing games, all those things you would not have an issue doing. It has eight gigabytes of RAM while the Ultra can go up to 12 gigabytes of RAM. So there is a difference there, but that is just for running more than one application and going back in history and grabbing older applications. But when it comes to like day-to-day -day use case, this phone runs just as good as the more premium phones do. So nothing to worry about there when it comes to performance. That's not a big deal. The big difference is when we talk about the camera, this is a triple camera setup on the back here and it is a really good camera system. I will say this camera system does rival the iPhone. Any iPhone you get, it does rival it. The S22 Ultra is the one that's gonna be a lot different. It has a much larger sensor, it has more features and space zoom and all these things that this phone doesn't have. But what this phone does have 
is solid. So we do have this 50 megapixel sensor right here. This is your main lens. And then you have a 10 megapixel and 12 megapixel. That's gonna be your ultra wide and then your telephoto lens. Now in the camera software, you do that 3X zoom without losing any quality. And then you have a 10X zoom and then a 30X zoom as well versus the S22 Ultra, which goes up to 100X zoom. And then it has a 30X zoom where you don't lose any quality. But beyond that, I would say the quality of image, just direct image, I'm not seeing a huge difference. It does have all this technology to help with lower light situations, which for the most part on static objects, it works great. When we talk about lower light images, like lower light objects, those objects need to be still as this camera likes to take a little bit of time to gather in more light when taking a picture. Now, if we are outside or it's bright inside of a room, no problems at all. This camera will snap pictures in the regular mode. Portrait mode does require a little bit more time to take pictures, but I will say portrait mode on this thing is extremely accurate down to the hair and it looks really good. So I'm very impressed with that. And I will say when you take this camera outside in general, you get really great shots. I love the algorithm that Samsung does when it comes to shots of the sky and outdoors. It looks really good. And I'm very impressed with what Samsung does year over year with this camera. Video, I wouldn't say has seen a dramatic increase of like better, but the stabilization has gotten better. And I will say that handheld, this camera is top notch. You know, I can definitely use footage shot on this phone right here in one of my YouTube videos and nobody would know the difference. It is extremely impressive. And by default, it does have some stabilization, but you can go into super steady mode, which gives you even more stabilization, which gives you even better smoothness in your shots. So regardless of how you want to use this camera, it is a killer, killer camera. It just lacks a little bit of finesse in lower light situations, but beyond that, I don't have many complaints when it comes to this camera. Now, in my initial review, I did go into camera a bit more. I talked about more specs and things like that. So if you wanna know more about the camera, I did talk about this in a different video. Now, speaking of different video, if you like this video and you're sticking around so far, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. 90% of you guys right now, you, you, you. Hit that subscribe button, be the best decision you made in the last 10 seconds. This phone's battery is a little bit smaller than what I'm actually used to. I'm used to much larger batteries because I use larger phones. I didn't expect to get a full day. My typical day starts at 7 a.m. and I would say by 8 p.m. is when I got that low battery warning. Whether it's 20%, 15%, that's negotiable depending on the day. But I was getting low battery warning at about 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. It just really depends. That's using the phone a lot. I do use my phone heavily. I listen listen to podcasts, I do take pictures, do social media, I do a lot of stuff from the phone. This phone can last a day, but it's just one of those things that depending on how you use it is the most important thing. It does have fast charging, which you don't have to worry about, but it doesn't have a charging brick in the box. So you need to buy an additional charging brick and this does reverse charging. So if you have like a Galaxy watch or you have another phone, you wanna charge it, you can then set it on the back and then at 4.5 watts, you can charge a different device, which is definitely cool to see. Now using this phone off and on for so many weeks, I can definitely see why this phone is rated very high from reviewers. This phone is $800 and that is for a 128 gigabyte. It is $50 more than the iPhone 13 starting point. Is this phone better than the iPhone 13? I would say when you compare phone to phone, this phone is definitely better than the iPhone 13. I think the camera system is just as good. I think the build, the design looks better. Samsung ecosystem has gotten better as well. And this thing is just featured pack. So you can get into the phone a variety of different ways. You can face to unlock. So essentially, I can look at it and then I can unlock the phone. I can also use the fingerprint right here and I can do a pin, I can do a swipe. So you have a lot of different ways to get into the phone, a lot of options there. And I will say in my experience, the battery when using the phone is a little bit better on the S22 than it is on the iPhone 13. I did a full comparison video as well. So of course, hit the links down below to watch that. Anyways, guys, this has been my long-term experience with the Galaxy S22. As always, if you have questions or comments or maybe your experience has been a little bit different, I would love to know about that. Anyways, guys, it's Kevin the Tech Ninja. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you guys later. Peace.